Uh, okay, well, I think I think shortcut. we I think we got it. I don't know. Anyways, I just found myself like really interested in like in in Bronze Age stuff and like in and around like it, it, ancient it Egypt. Me off, it knocked me off of the rope because I looked behind me. Can you believe that? Yes, I can. This game's fucking terrible. Give me this. It knocked me off the rope because I looked. I turned the camera. Sorry, you're interested in Bronze all, all I was just saying was that I am more interested in ancient Egypt than I have been since I was like eight, and it just so happens that uh, an Assassin's Creed game set in ancient Egypt is coming out next week. Here's why so I was, I was like, hey, that's an convenient. Assassin's Creed game. There was an ad for the game that had like a wall of hieroglyphics, and this person that was taking that is like a basically like they were like a professor or like a graduate student in like Oops. hieroglyphics basically uh, went to try and decode the the wall and yeah. see if it, it was just gibberish or not and there is like a legitimate hidden message in the text nice. and it was like that's the fucking is that screen yeah. that I've been missing yeah if they've got shit like that if there's more of that stuff I'm in. I'm hooked. If there's like a weird puzzle thing, um, if they get, I just want them to get. I can't. I just. I cannot believe they just threw out four I know. games worth of story. I know. In for nothing. The they thing, didn't trade it for anything. The thing I'm kind of concerned about, though, is that the premise of this is like, oh, it's the origin of the Assassin's Brotherhood. Basically because their whole fucking series is built on the idea of, like, being very location-specific. And it's like, no one would ever be interested in a location earlier than ancient Egypt, so forget it. Like, this might as well be the first one. But, like, they already heavily established that Altair was the one that founded the Order of, the, like, the Assassin Brotherhood, yeah. whatever. So, like... You think this takes place earlier than... Oh, well, it definitely does. Why is that? Because ancient Egypt is a lot earlier than the Crusades. Uh, <laughs> but... Good point. I mean, listen, I don't, I don't need to... I don't mean to be a history well, nerd on yeah, you. No, 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 here's the thing. You were talking about the Bronze Age, but I actually don't... Like, Egypt is a country that exists yeah, just yeah, that's today. True. And so it, like, could have been at any point. Well, I think when you say ancient, it's bare minimum, it's... BC. I don't think that's true. Yeah, ain't that's what ancient means. That's not what ancient means. Ancient yeah, means old. Ancient means really old. <laughs> yeah. But like nothing. Hey, guess what? Eighteen hundred years ago was really old. Right, but it's not what it's just not what ancient means. That's not that's I think you're wrong. Okay. I don't think that ancient has some like hinging on like the Christian calendar of when Jesus was born. Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm not telling you that like one A.D. is the cutoff for the ancient for ancient times. I'm just telling you that the cutoff for ancient times is way earlier than that. So if you're getting as far as A.D., you're already Belonging way past the ancient to times. The very distant past and no longer in existence. So I would call the Crusades ancient. Okay, fine. All I'm saying is, fuck you and you suck. <laughs> and you know what? You're not wrong. So, listen, like, why are we arguing if we're in agreement? Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, Where's the old man? And he's right here. Oh, is that an old man? That's an old man. Oh, look at this guy. Look at how old he is. Old. We just talked to him like two seconds ago. Anyways, I'm just concerned anytime Assassin's, uh, Assassin's Creed is a game that loves to rewrite its own story, and it's yeah. it's never well, done anything good with its story. So I'm concerned that like they're just gonna they're gonna rewrite stuff that wasn't great with other stuff that isn't great, and it's just gonna make it a big so, whole mess. So the thing, yeah. So the thing about um, Altair is that that was like historically. The assassins, that the that that the, the people that the assassins and assassins <laughs> uh -huh. are based on, yeah, historically were around during the Crusades. Okay, like that is a real thing. Um, like those pe those like the assassins and assassins Creed is like a fictionalized version of an actual group. 
Um, right. And so to then go like actually 800 years before that, there was also assassins. Is like it's true that there were yeah. you know or also like assassins by the by. <laughs> By the way, you can trace the lineage of these assassins to also the American Revolution. Right. <laughs> yeah, like we're we're way past that point. Well, but that's how the, that's when it started really running off the track. When it was like, like okay, it's the assassins, and their enemies are the Knights Templar. And then, in the future, somehow the assassins are on the same side as the founders of America, who were all. Freemasons, which were connected to the actual Knights Templar, that's it. Just totally, they well, just like, fl they literally flipped it. Mm, yeah. I don't remember if that was what was happening in this. Like, wasn't it a little bit muddier than that? Like, I don't think it was like well, oh, because no, George Washington was like a good guy, and that's why they put out that DLC that was George Washington's a bad guy. Because they, because people were like, why isn't George Washington a bad guy in this? And they were like, okay, we'll put out a DLC where he's a bad guy. I didn't finish that game because it sucked. Um, it was bad and I hated it. Oh, you're the mouth dentist. Yeah, what did you think? That you had to find a mouth dentist. <laughs> we gotta find a dentist in here. Is anyone in this restaurant a dentist? <laughs> Well, I think... I mean, listen. You can't fault them for making that connection. They're like, King George, George Washington. What if... What if... another? What if they were both kings? What if they were what? The thing was, the thing about the DLC was that it's called the, the Tyranny of King George and the idea is that you're supposed to think, oh, the British King George, but actually it's an alternate history where Washing history Washington where Washington was a bad guy instead of a guy that committed genocide oh, I'm, against the Native American. I'm sorry. Actually, what it was is the tyranny of King Washington because I assume they started with the tyranny of King George and went, this will be a really fun twist and then realized nobody gets this because everyone's dumb and no one remembers history, so we might as well call it King Washington so at least people understand what's going on. Is that true? Did they change the name? I don't... I think it started as the Tyranny of King George and they changed it. But also, it might just have always been announced that way, and I'm just assuming well, that Well, because if was... they said the Tyranny of King George and then they showed George Washington on the cover, yeah. no one is that dumb. No one's like, oh, they meant the... They meant... They meant... Yeah. The idea that people are like, oh, they mean King George. I'm like, who's remembering King George? <laughs> Yeah, I guess what I, what I should say is I, I think I, I got mixed up in what I was saying, really. Okay. It wouldn't really be that somebody is, like, stupid for not getting it. I think it's just that if you call it the tyranny of King George, the joke doesn't work unless you inform them that the DLC is about George Washington as a as an evil king. Yeah. Like, it, it, it needs explanation before it makes sense. Anyway, fuck George Washington. That guy sucks. I don't know anything about him, but, like, everybody sucks. So, yeah, of course he sucks. Um, my, my, my George Washington sucks factoid was that, uh, um, he took a break from fighting the, uh, the, the Revolutionary War to commit genocide against the Native Americans. They, uh... Oh, really? Their nickname for him was The Town Destroyer. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Anytime you're ready, guys. Yeah. Anyway, my my my, my overall point. Serious talking about some some Assassin's Creed Three specifics uh, in the chat. I don't remember a ton from that game because I hated it and yeah. it was years ago and yeah. I didn't finish it. But my I guess my point is that like like a lot of the founding fathers were provably Freemasons and the Freemasons are provably in real life connected to the the night the actual Knights Templar. And that is the sort of stuff that previous Assassin's Creed games would have capitalized on 
and made a game where the founding fathers of America were all fucking yeah. evil people trying to control the world. Well, what's, what's interesting... And that's way cooler than what they did. What's interesting about it is that the, f the symbol for the Freemasons actually is way closer to the assassin symbol. That's true. Yeah, it is. And... Wait. Ah, man, I'd have to go revisit it because... I don't remember if they ignored the Freemason thing or like what they did with it, but man, that fucking that that fucking like I was gonna say like early game twist, but what was so great about it was the twist wasn't that early. It was like fucking what like five to like, ten hours into the like, game. No, I think it was like three or three to five, three to six. Hours. I think I think it was a little bit more than that, but I mean it really it depends on if you fucked around doing side shit or not. But. And I did. And I did. But again, it's hard to remember this game came out years ago. But yeah. And I, I think neither of us finished it. Um, yeah, it's we, we can go ahead and spoil it. If you haven't played Assassin's Creed 3, uh, you start out as this guy who goes around uh, silently killing people with blades attached to his wrists and wearing a cloak. And uh, you, just, I mean, you just naturally assume that he's one of the assassins, and you play as him for, like, several hours and while he builds up, like a, like, a community of followers, like an organization, and they go, like, oh, like, we're, we can find it. We, our organization is, is now underway. We can finally start our uh, plot to take over the entire world. Long live the Templars. And you're like, what? Um, wait, sorry, who is writing this? What? What are you talking about? The thing that you just said. It you you start out you start out as a guy. Oh yes. Okay. With all the marks of I, an assassin. I thought that, that we were talking yeah. about that that guy that you thought was an assassin and wasn't. Uh, but I was I thought maybe you had transitioned to a different no, thing. I no. no. Um, Remember to take proper care of your teeth. That's funny. Nice PSA in there. Yeah. Seer has a good point saying the Assassin's Creed games also kind of make Templars out to be uh, guys who history looks badly upon and assassins to be guys who history looks kindly upon. And they just go like, well, anybody that people think is a good guy was an assassin and anybody people think of as a bad guy was a Templar. Um, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, it and I still and and uh, Seer says if you did finish uh, Assassin's Creed Three you'd hate it way more because fuck that game and yeah like that's why we didn't finish it because yeah. we just heard about we we heard that it only got worse from there so we were like ah forget it yeah and I still think about going back to finish that game because it's like the setting is just so appealing. Um, I was so excited I for just, that game. I cannot. I like literally cannot get over the like how they fucking. Just buried the I know, and stuff. I know. It drives me absolutely crazy. It was like the linchpin to what made those games interesting yeah. was they had they brought they brought alien gods into it and then just was like, let's just forget that we brought out alien gods. Maybe we'll they'll forget about and like Yeah. Well it, I mean it was it was because like they kicked out Patrice Desolet, who was the guy with the whole vision for the thing. I thought that he quit. Uh, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure he was fired. Oh, yeah. I, I thought that he resigned. I don't think Maybe so. Maybe it was one of those, like, like you're resigning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Why would they kick that guy out? Those games were well, so I, good. Well, I think and the thing was, so I think they were like, hey, we're pouring money into your thing, and you're not killing it. And, and but you're, he was killing it. Well, I mean, people were... This Assassin's Creed 1 sold really well, but people were really negative about it. And you never know, like, it's not only about how well a game sells. Because if, if a game sells really well, but the executives hate working with somebody, they can just go like, well, you already did all the work to make your thing popular, so we can just keep putting out games from your series without having to deal with you, and that's, like, all we need. God, I hate... I hate... Companies are so bad. Companies are so bad. Yeah. And honestly, intellectual property's bad, too. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Keith, all intellectual property is intellectual theft. <laughs> Run Button and Friends of the Table were streaming at the same time? Oh, man. Counter-stream. We just fucking counter-stream these guys. Those fucking idiot hacks. Why? Uh, anyway, um, if you're if you're if you're watching this and you're already signed up to uh, contentburger.biz, 
Uh, why don't you check out Friends of the Table? Go to friendsofthetable.cash and throw some money at friendsofthetable.cash. Oh, I thought you were going to say if you, and I think I actually I think I think the Complex Archive, the Complex Rockets podcast archive has been like inaccessible for like almost a year and just no one's told me because no one cares. Right. Uh, I care, we care. But, yeah, I mean we do care. Uh but there's totally if you want to hear us at the absolute peak of our excitement about Assassin's Creed, there we Keith and I did an Assassin's Creed Brotherhood spoiler cast where yeah. we were just uh, going crazy. We we basically cracked all of everything happening in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood before I anybody else. Spent, yes, we really did. We really I did. I spent hours googling the insane fucking conspiracy theories that they threaded together in tiny little hints in their dumb side quest puzzles. Where are we going? Hours I spent. And I don't remember a single detail of it now, but like, holy shit, they really, really like... They really weaved a ton of insane shit together and hit it in this thing. Like, and it's like... I did it. The thing that... The I think. Thing, I think you did do it, yeah. And the, the thing that they were doing it was like an unnecessary side quest buried inside of the full game and then buried inside of those little puzzles that were already unnecessary were even more unnecessary clues that you didn't have to Google at all to figure out the solutions to. And I just did. And there was a lot there. It was crazy. Well, what was weird about that was Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the one where Kristen Bell's character, Lucy, gets like, like Desmond gets controlled by one of I the space gods. Bell. Yeah. I mean, it was like modeled to look after, look like her too. I, I mean, now I can see it. Yeah. Uh, Desmond's character gets controlled and kills Lucy and then that's kind of, that's the end of the game. And everyone was like really confused about that. Like, what does that mean? Why did it happen? And we like analyzed the dialogue from the cutscene like five times and went like, I think it's trying to say that Lucy is secretly a Templar and the alien god killed her for us as like a favor to us. Okay, we finally got that sorted out. And then in the next game, I kept waiting for them to, like in Revelations, I kept meant waiting for them to mention it and i don't think they ever did no. and then assassin's creed 3 comes and it's like way after it's like a month or two after that and they're just like man i can't believe lucy was a templar i'm like you can't just say it like that like we only know that yeah. because we watched yeah. the cutscene five no times knew. nobody knew that like yeah. you can't just I act like it's normal about that. <laughs> we yeah we knew that because we paid absurdly it was insane and also there was the whole thing of like, oh, like what when it happened in Brotherhood, it seemed like it was a planned thing. But then we also found out that like Kristen Bell just decided not to be in Assassin's Creed anymore. So they were like, oh, what should we do with this character? Let's pretend like she's a Templar and then kill her. Yeah. And so it so it actually wasn't really a big twist. It's impossible to find someone that sounds like Kristen Bell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she had rights to the likeness of the character. It's it's definitely possible, but yeah. like, we but you yes. just you just find a less. The thing was, she was already a double agent. Yeah, like she helps you escape I know. from the Templar yeah. facility. She does. Yeah. Like, <sighs> come on. Although you know, if if you if you ask me to stretch, like, imagine a world where they really actually committed to the bullshit that they spent four games setting up. And I, imagine they didn't abandon that. I can see them convincing me that like, yeah, sure. she helped us escape to gain our trust so that we would learn even more stuff uh, where we didn't feel like we were under duress, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Slayer says four corner week time cube. And yeah, we definitely <laughs> did go a little bit time we cube. We went a little bit time cube. Here's the thing. But like, remember there was the, we, I think we still mention this every once in a while. There's, there's that like, uh, what was it? Subject sixteen, yeah. that character. There, there was like a cutscene with Subject oh my sixteen, God, so where, oh, where he like depressing that nothing came from it. Nothing came from it. Yeah, I spent hours solving stupid puzzles and googling bullshit in order to learn more about Subject sixteen and how how this was all somehow related to like. The, the fable of Adam and Eve, which was like actually created by these weird aliens to start our civilization off, uh, and some like weird 2001 Space Odyssey obelisk way, and and then like the conclusion to that was like, oh, he died. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was like, he died. It was like, oh, he died. I guess there's nothing more to learn. Oh, my God. Sorry, what were you going to say about 16? Uh, I was just going to say there was that cutscene where he talks about the sun. And at this point, like, the, oh, our son? the sun has been mentioned. Yeah, he says the sun, your son. Oh, my God. And, and we, just, we just assumed that he was talking about the sun... But then I think we had this idea and we're like, what if he means a different kind of sun? And we turn on the subtitles and he says... And he did. It yeah, did. He, he That's said, what it was. He said, the sun, S-U-N. Then he said, your son, S-O-N. We're like, yeah. Desmond's son? He doesn't have a son. What? Ah! Yeah, we lost our minds. Because that was... We literally stopped the podcast to go watch that scene on YouTube with the subtitles on. And... And we were right. That's what it was. We fucking cracked that get whole game wide open. Yeah. And and that that was the most insulting part was oh like God. I was going into the future Assassin's Creed games going like oh let's see if we were right let's see if the plot unfolds in this way that proves that we we predicted it correctly and instead they just assu- they just acted like all that shit was assumed knowledge or like no fuck you we figured this all out why are you acting like it was obvious uh, Seer says, I, th- I thought they weren't aliens, just a civilization that was around before us. Sure, yeah. Yeah, whatever. They were... Whatever. You know, <laughs> you know what we point, mean. You <laughs> know what we mean. Hey, listen, if they don't give a fuck about what those things are, we don't have to either. Is that a... Uh, yeah, that's Tom Nook. Oh, it's not the, it's not the dad from uh, uh, the Bioware RPG Sonic game? There was, was there a raccoon dad in the Ar- Sonic RPG? I mean, the main character was a raccoon, right? The Struth girl? Oh, no, that was Sonic Rush Adventure. Oh, that was Sonic, yeah. Struth! Struth! You know what happened, Keith? What's that? I didn't pay enough attention to the vignette. Yeah. So I'm not talking to you right now because I'm only looking at the screen. Don't even try to converse with me. Okay, but you are going to do this whole level. Oh. Okay, I thought it was underwater. I was very wrong about that. You are going to do this whole level in using my my Australian accent from that episode of uh, Sonic, right? Well, at some point we just turned it into a pirate accent. At some point, I thought I think you mean immediately. Immediately, yeah. Although thinking back, I should have just done a Steve Irwin. I think anybody can do a Steve Irwin. I think even you could. And he, here you go. He I give me a Steve Irwin. I don't want to. No. Come on, I know it's embarrassing. No, you gotta do a Steve I don't like it. I, if you do one, I'll do one. Keith, I just—it's not that—it's not that I'm embarrassed about my bad impersonations. It sounds it's just, like you. I just—I, I, I—it's—it's I, it's, it's disrespectful of the dead, Keith. I just won't do it because it's just too. Death is too sacred to me. Okay, no one that's ever died like could Josh be. Irwin. Uh, I don't think he has a son. He, he has, does have a son. His oh, son okay. is, uh, very, he's, he's like a young kid. He's like 15, and he's very adorable. And he goes on, uh, he goes on talk shows and talks about his dad and talks about animals. Right. Okay. And his daughter does the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you know his, you know his daughter. No. Bindi. Everyone oh, yeah, knows yeah, yeah, Bindi. Knows Bindi. <laughs> Say everybody knows Bindi, but as Steve Irwin. No, you do it. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that, but I will do. Steve Irwin. I gotta get into it. I gotta get right. Oh, right. <laughs> what we have? <laughs> Stop! It's so bad. It's a snake. <laughs> He's wriggling around. <laughs> Now, Keith just did a terrible Australian accent. Crocodile! So, so what Keith is doing is, is clearly some kind of abomination. Uh, but I, I would like to say, there is at least one person uh, in our comment section before has been like, oh, geez, is it really that hard to do an Australian accent? Yes. Don't act. Oh, like, don't I, like, oh, don't act don't like it's so. easy. Seems pretty easy to me. <laughs> All right, that one was pretty good. So here's the thing. It was- you gotta grab them by the back of the head <laughs> and squeeze them tight. So that's not really a Steve Irwin, but I think that's an, a, a passable Australian. 
But I am Steve Irwin. <laughs> That's who I am. Uh, see, the thing with, uh, like, within the last year, uh, Amelia Rose went through a phase where she was watching the, like, Wiggles Steve Irwin crossover video, like, all the time. So I've probably heard Steve Irwin a lot more recently. Which is why I'm not going to try to do it. The thing there's is, there's nothing I love more than a big snipe. The th the thing is, there's like R wriggling. There's there's really not that much gravel in his voice at all. See, it's mostly just me. like enthusiastic. Although gravel helps me get into it. Yeah. Though. I don't know what it is. He's biting me now. <laughs> <laughs> You just you just hit on like the platonic ideal of a an Australian impersonation quote. <laughs> uh, like I don't know. It's a lot of blood. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of blood. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> I don't know if you remember how uh, the, the Red versus Blue guys would always talk about how, like, each of the voice actors had their own, like, go-to lines for the character that they would say to get the voice right. Oh, before you're they an anchor phrase. And, okay, an anchor phrase, yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's, that's your anchor phrase for, like, any Australian accent. As a <laughs> he's biting me now. He's biting me now. <laughs> oh, he, he's in there good. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the mud pond and catch a yabby. <laughs> remember to I love a good yabby. Remember to tip your garbo. <laughs> they had a they had like, what is a garbo? It's a garbage man? Yeah. Okay. Do you, they, know, do you know what a yabby is? A yabby? Yeah, a yabby is a, like an Australian crayfish. They call them yabbies. Ah, okay. They they recently had someone write into the bombcast with like uh, here's a bunch of Australian slang. Try to figure it out. And, like, one of them was Garbo, and I felt very smart for knowing it. And then there was, like, four other ones that were just a word ending with O. And I'm just like, okay, so that's just anyone that does something just to add an O. And that's what they're called. I make shoes. I'm a shoe-o. Pretty much, yeah. I forgot I didn't have a jetpack. 